Welcome to Design World's How to Calculate series, where you learn how to apply the most important equations for sizing, selecting, and comparing linear bearings. In this session, we'll learn how to determine the required dynamic load capacity of a recirculating ball or roller bearing based on the amount of L10 bearing life your application requires. In the last segment regarding recirculating ball and roller bearings, we chose a bearing and determined its L10 life based on its dynamic load capacity C and the applied load F. But in many cases, the situation is reversed. You know what bearing life the application requires, but you're not sure which bearing will provide the required life. So we're going to approach the L10 bearing life equation backwards, if you will, to find out which bearing we need to select in order to get the required life in our application. Here's the bearing life equation for a circulating ball bearing linear guides in its standard form, where L is the bearing's travel life in meters, C is the bearing's dynamic load capacity in newtons, and F is the applied load, also in newtons. In order to use this equation to find out the required bearing load capacity based on a given life, we just need to rearrange the equation to solve for C. First, we'll move the ratio of load capacity to applied load, C over F, to the left-hand side of the equation. Then we'll move life to the right-hand side. Next, we'll take the cube root of both sides to get rid of that pesky third power. Then we'll move the applied load, F, to the right side. So the required dynamic load capacity, C, equals the applied load, F, multiplied by the cube root of the life divided by 100,000. Our application data tells us the desired life and the applied load, so we can solve for the required dynamic load capacity. Let's say the applied load is 2200 newtons and the required life is 28,000 kilometers. Using the equation we just developed, we determine that the application requires a bearing with dynamic load capacity of at least 14,393 newtons in order to achieve the desired life. Using the linear bearing data shown here for a recirculating ball bearing, we can see that the size 15 bearing doesn't have quite enough dynamic load capacity, C, at 9,860 newtons to meet our life requirement. So we move up to the size 20 bearing, which has a dynamic load capacity, C, of 23,400 newtons, which is more than sufficient for our required life. The equation we just discussed was for recirculating ball bearings. Recall from our last session that the L10 bearing life equation is slightly different for recirculating roller bearings because the rollers make line contact with the raceways as opposed to point contact for recirculating balls. The process of solving for the required dynamic load capacity, C, is the same regardless of whether the bearing uses balls or rollers, but the final equation is slightly different. For roller bearings, the exponent for bearing life, L, is 3 over 10. Another thing to be aware of when determining bearing life or load capacity is the travel distance on which the bearing's load capacity is based. If the load capacity for the bearing series you're looking at is based on 50 kilometers or 50,000 meters, the 100,000 in the denominator of the equation is replaced with 50,000. This is true whether the bearing uses recirculating balls or rollers. For recirculating roller bearings with a load capacity based on 50,000 meters, the equation looks like this. Now that you've rearranged the L10 bearing life equation to solve for dynamic load capacity, you can choose the most appropriate bearing for the application based on the applied load and the required travel life. For more information on linear bearings and other linear motion topics, visit LinearMotionTips.com or designworldonline.com. Thanks for watching.